The second thing that leaders need to do well in solving problems is to clarify our goals. Um, now this is a minefield because goal setting is, is actually quite a difficult thing. Um, we've got a dilemma here. Do we set uh, idealistic goals that are really imaginative, that, that take us beyond where we think is, is possible to release people's motivation and creativity? Or do we play it realistic? Do we stick at the level that we think is achievable so that people can relate to that and say, well, this is possible? There are pros and cons to, to each of these. Um, what I want to do is just to run with the example from web charting where communication was the, uh, the, the thing that at the end of the day we want to improve. Typically one of the reasons why communication uh, is a problem is that everybody's overloaded. We haven't got time to think, we haven't got time to communicate properly and so we do things uh, just just knee-jerk reactions, we don't prepare for meetings and so on. So overload tends to be one of the themes that emerges when we're, we're considering this. So I'm going to uh, use overload as, as, uh, an, as an example here. Uh, now, if we're setting goals for, the, uh, for overload and, and the, the changes we want to make here, um, then the achievable level would be to say, well, we need to reduce um, the amount of overload that people are experiencing so that uh, people have, say, uh, 30 minutes in every day uh, on average for communication, whereas at the moment they're getting none. But the, uh, the idealistic level here um, is that nobody is ever overloaded. Everybody has space to think, has space, and we can really devote a lot of time to communicating, uh, to communicating really high quality with each other, with clients, with customers, with stakeholders. Uh, that when we have ideas, we communicate, we have time to listen and reflect to what everybody's saying. Uh, we want to be uh, the cutting edge, world's best example of high quality communication at work. Um, and we're going we're gonna to absolutely nail this issue of, of overload. So we're, we're kind of setting, setting the, bar, the bar extremely high. So we're getting to the level where uh, universities and business schools want to come and find out how we did what we did because it just, it's, it's so exceptional. Um, now, there are problems with, with each of these. Um, the idealistic level might feel uh, unreal uh, and impossible. The achievable level is kind of boring and, you know, it's okay. So we make some incremental changes that are a little bit like uh, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic um, rather than uh, thinking about the, the, the big picture. Um, now, here's my suggestion. Do both. That will be incredibly helpful later on. If we have the, the, the minimum level, uh, the achievable level is a bar that we can define quite clearly. We can specify exactly what we, how we would know that we've made progress in this area. It could even be the minimal acceptable level for uh, the amount of overload and the quality of communication that we're, we're facing. The high bar here is not only is, uh, you know, we dealt with overload so brilliantly people want to come and study us, but communication um, is exemplary, that it, 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 it's absolutely brilliant. Um, if we've got both of those stated, then anything beyond uh, the achievable level that we achieve, um, we can track that towards the ideal. We don't just stop at the achievable level. That's the, that's the problem with achievable level. It's boring and we tend to stop uh, when we get to it. What we really want is we want to be taking leaps. We want to be taking, going way beyond uh, the goals that we've, we've set uh, and getting people working towards that. So uh, with staff performance, for example, we can set the ideal level of the ideal team member. If we had the world's best employee joining us, what would they look like? What, what attributes would they have? What skills would they have? What would they know? Uh, the achievable level uh, is defined more like this. Now if, if we're performing worse than that, then that's unacceptable and we need to bring about some changes. If we're working beyond that, so the goal setting becomes effective. We're working between, we've got a, a, a very clearly identified acceptable bar and we've got the ideal. So let's 
work out a progress towards that. Let's use the benefits of both. It's not an either or, do both. Now I'd like you to, uh, when you're working through this, you've identified uh, maybe a core issue, you've got an underlying theme. With each of the underlying themes, your step is to identify the achievable goal and an impossible, uh, an idealistic um, goal that takes you beyond uh, to, to world, world-class standards. Do that with each of the things that you're, you're working on. Over to you.